see. So on the box where you see your name, in the upper right hand corner, if you hover your cursor there, you'll see a there's so James. How do I how do I do my photo? I've got start video rename, hide non video, hide self view. James, can you jump in and help Kathy? Yeah. Um so what James. are we what are we doing here? Hi, how are you? I can see everybody. I can't see me, which is not a a major uh, problem. <laughs> no, we, we can't see you either, Kathy. That is. Oh, the then okay. Well, then I maybe. I'm I not can sure. hear you, but I can't see you. Right. Okay. So, so start Kathy, video. Kathy, down on the bottom left. Uh, yeah, the video, right next to the mute button. There's, yes. Like, click that. That might put your face on. There you go. There I am. Oh, you're yeah, great, James. Thank you so much. <laughs> okay. That's enough of that. <laughs> <laughs> the tech guy had to rescue me. As <laughs> usual. And so, some, somebody's already sharing their screen, it looks like. Well, uh, that would be me. Is that okay? Should I not yeah. be? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. That's, no, that's, that's good. good. I just wanted to make sure I could do PowerPoint and um, if I couldn't, I was going to go and kill myself somewhere. <laughs> we'll have a nice good. chat and then we'll send somebody for you. Okay, good. <laughs> Mr. Zinn, did you used to teach at Santa Fe High? No, those are the imposter Zins, but I like Jane and John a lot. <laughs> oh, that's right. John Zinn. The, the real Zins all start with a D. Oh, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Imposters. <laughs> great teachers, great teachers. Both of my kids had had them. Yeah, wonderful people. I'm I'm scanning some old yearbook photos from um, gosh, 1960. I had to borrow uh, one of my brother's friend's yearbooks, and um, I found some pictures of. Uh, Mr. Dinkle's mom, Rinalda. Oh, yeah. I, I need to scan those. I was looking for someone else who I found, but I, it was great to see all the old teachers. And Clyde Fawcett and all those. Oh, yeah. Guys. Cla uh, Cla was it Clyde Santa or Claude Santa? Clyde was the dad. Okay. And I don't remember the kid's name, but there was a Fawcett kid. And that would have been yeah, like 62 or something like that. Yeah, see, my brother's 14 years older than me. So when uh, he had chemistry with Mr. Senna, mm -hmm. and he did a good job. And then I came along 14 years later and <laughs> it was terrible at chemistry. And Mr. Senna was trying to say, real politely, he was trying to say, are you sure you have the are same you adopted? parents? <laughs> yeah, are you adopted? And I was like, no, I swear. But he, he didn't really believe me that I was from the same family. He was like, you're mm -hmm. gonna have some real trouble in this class. Back in the day. So how is everyone? Is everyone well? Everybody's well. Good. We're all well? Yes. Well, we are. I, I seem to have a, a syndrome of some sort. Um, my Beard is growing in gray. I know. For some odd reason. Oh. I don't know what's up with that. James is laughing. The few the few times I go get a haircut, I get I look at the floor after that, and I'm going, "Who was this old guy that was here before you? Before me? And I was like, not clearly not me. Yeah. I just quit getting haircuts. That was so <laughs> That's not a bad thing. Well, after I last haircut I had was in Mexico in December, and then mm -hmm. I finally decided I'd better do something because I've been playing a lot of tennis and getting really shaggy. So I did go get a haircut, but that was two months ago. So I think this once a six month plan is just fine. Right, right. So Jim, before I was able to see mm -hmm. everybody on board, is that because she's sharing right now, or is there a saying I'm missing? Yeah. I yeah. could stop sharing. Let me stop. No, that's sharing. okay. Well, at least now I know how to do it. So I think All right. it's easy to. Oh, okay, so there it is. I can there see you know. gallery view. Rogue's gallery, mm -hmm. it says. Uh -huh. I don't... 
Oh, there's Virginia. Hi, Virginia. Hi. Hi, Virginia. Hi. How are you? There we are. Got everybody, kind of, sort of. Am I too loud? Is this oh. the volume? No. I was everybody. doing a Zoom one time, and, and I can't remember what it was, but somebody complained about the ticking of the clock in my background because I'm in the, my, my grandmother's clock is in there and went ringing. Mm -hmm. I had to go stop the clock. Mm -hmm. I don't know what it's like. It's all Hi, Virginia. Virginia. What's that? It's on? Oh, you see us? Yes. Mm -hmm. I can see you. <laughs> see you, wait. Hello. Hey. Hi. Wait a <laughs> I'm gone. I don't know where I am. <laughs> <laughs> There's no video on Anna Marie. Oh, Suni's up. Hello, me. Hello, hello. Hey, how you doing? Good. Hey. How are you? Hello. Good. Good. Hi, Virginia. Hi. So, Virginia, you, you finally got the email and the link and everything, obviously. Yes, uh -huh. thank you. Good, good. Mm -hmm. Hey, Wayman. Hello. I keep going off. I don't know what's hey, going Wayman. on here. <laughs> it's timing out or so something. So, we're still six minutes short of time, right? Okay. Yeah. Hey, Kathy. Yes. Who's How you doing? Person? Good. <laughs> Good. I enjoyed. Well, I, I enjoyed seeing your flower. So how are you gonna? Oh, feature? thank you. Yes. In, uh, on the coffee Actually, table. I can see it pretty well. I'll just, I'll just move a little behind you. But, so. Oh, okay. Yeah, it's supposed to be like fifty. Yeah, but it's out. It is. Kathy, how hot is it in Kauai? Oh my gosh, it's a million degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm guessing it's probably 93, something like that. Wow. Usually yep. about this time, it's it might be a little cooler than that. Thank about you. 2 o'clock, it's in the low 90s. Yeah, it's been mm -hmm. terrible here in Albuquerque. What is it there? Is it? My cousin Tom, Tom Fisk is in St. George, Utah, and we do a morning Marco Polo every day with about 20 of his family members there to make sure everybody's okay. And it's 113 and... St. George, Utah, yesterday. Oh, wow. Gosh, I'm going to run a look real quick. 92 in Tosuki. Hi, Anna. And they got all the trees. Oh, we have a Eight. cold snap. It's 88. It's 88, yeah. yeah. 88 in Santa Fe. <laughs> 86 in Taos. Oh, nice. Mm. Well, Virginia V. Hill isn't going to be able to make it, uh, so she's not going to be coming in. Too bad. Too bad. We should have about 25, 27 people all together. Hello, Joanne Garcia. There you Hi. Hello, Anna Marie Seven. Hello. Hmm. Art. Hi. Hello. I've met you before. Nice to meet you. Okay. Thank you. Looks like we might actually get some rain here. I can't believe it. But the clouds are getting dark. Yeah, we had a pathetic monsoon season this year. Oh, yeah. totally. Monsoon. Monsoon. I like. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> Thanking a lot. That's a problem. Let me show you his guest. How about Maria? Is she still going to be on? Yeah, I talked with her just a couple of minutes ago, so she should be jumping on. Good. But I think she's probably going to be on, uh, on her phone rather than a laptop, so maybe she oh, okay. 
It should, should be jumping on here in a moment. Just type in that you're here, that you're showing your guest. Mm -hmm. I like everyone's background. It's so nice with the Vegas and everything, and I've got my mm -hmm. wall. <laughs> well, that way we can focus on you, you know. Oh, no, that's okay. <laughs> No, it's that's the only so thing nice. interesting about these uh, correspondence and the news part. You get to see, you know, their houses and what they've got in their background. Right? It's not too much stage. It's like it's not fake. And their books. Yeah, their yeah. books. They're fake books. No, they're real books. Well, Jim, I love this because here's my background on my work computer. Is uh, you'll recognize that skyline. So that's the Denver skyline on my other computer. <laughs> I know that skyline. James, you might have a request to record. Do you, are you the host for that? Yeah, we're going to record. Oh, Ken, do you have a request from Brian also? Do you see it on there on the left, maybe on the left or the right? I'll change mine. Yeah, we recorded the last one and, and posted a, a link to it after the fact so that Anybody oh, okay. that didn't have a chance to, to uh, attend the original meeting had, had an opportunity to see it online after the fact. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. I just wanted to try to record it for Maria and didn't, you know, in case you guys were busy, you know, if there's any delay in posting it. So if you see a request to record, um, you could, if you could allow that, that'd be great. Uh, looks like Maria is coming here. Hey, Stephen, so, you know, how was your birthday? Yes. Hi there. Hi. Welcome. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. Of course. It. Of course. Oh, Sophia. Hey. Hi. 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 Stephen. Hi. 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 I can't figure it out. I'm going to have to connect and go through. How's how your birthday, Steve? Oh, you know, forgettable. I didn't do my audio because I thought they might you know, build each other, but it, uh, I keep getting to the 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 what is the Am I there? Yes. Can you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Hi, Jama. Hi. <laughs> hey, Maria. Hey, Kathy. Hey, man, how are you? Wayman. Hey, Wayman. Hi, Carmen. <laughs> Hi, there. Campbell. Hi, Carmen. Hi, Julie Campbell. Um, Maria, I can't see you. You can't see me. No. Oh, no, no, they're most... Uh, wait. Wait. Can't see, can't see Jerry. Oh, there you go. There you go. There you go. Okay. <laughs> we'll we'll start in about five minutes here. Okay. Looks like we've got. I uh, can see you, but I don't think you can see me. It's Judy. Judy I, no, Judy, we, I don't we, see you. No, we we. Oh, I don't know. No. It's not. But I can hear you. <laughs> this is this is Jerry Kerr. I for some reason I can't. Uh, my video's not on. Can you hear me? Yeah, we can hear you, Jerry. Yeah, it goes on. Uh, uh, James may on. have to. James may have to sh tell you what he told me. Yeah, Jerry, I just sent you. There you go. There you go, Jerry. There, there, there you go. Oh, there you go. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> There's John. Maria, can we purchase your your backdrop for our own personal <laughs> you know, and pretend we live in a redwood forest uh, a place? You know? Hi, Harry. Better for, oh, Better hi, Harry. For you to come here. It, it's a holographic. Oh, so it's a holographic image. Hi, Jerry. Hi, Jerry. <laughs> That's how you get so much done. You you're just teleporting, you know, between different universes. <laughs> Unlike the rest of us. Hello, Harry. Howdy. Rebecca. Hi. Rebecca. Hi. Hi, Rebecca. Rebecca. Hi. 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 Oh, there's Judy. Hi, Judy. Hi. Uh, it feels like 
sixth grade, like, yay, I know. Back in school. <laughs> all our friends, yeah. <laughs> people we think we know from last year, we're not sure. I know, <laughs> it's a different world. Yeah. We need our masks. Starting junior high school. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, this is, it's refreshing to be able to speak with somebody with no mask. No mask, I, yeah. yeah. I just, <laughs> yeah. So we can do this now. <laughs> Does anybody have a margarita in front of them or something fun? I've got a beer. Yeah, I've got a blue moon. <laughs> there you go. Epic camper. A buble. My so, mom she got me coffee. I usually get her coffee. She got me coffee. Nice. <laughs> Babies, huh? maybe. I don't know. Oh, this is Sonia. Sonia. Sonia, Sonia are you, uh, are you Sonia. in the house? Yes, I'm He's in the house. Taos. Wow, yeah. yeah. Uh, you can Look just type it in there. He's a, a flamenco teacher, dance teacher. Oh. Oh, can you hear me? <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Was that and, Lorenzo? Hmm? Oh, I, I, I can only see one person at a time. Hi, Judy. Oh, my gosh, There's your hair has gotten so long. <laughs> Beautiful. And I cut six. Thank you. You only see one person at a time? Yeah. This is probably a setting or something. Turn on hey, for two uh, gallery view. Yeah. Well, you know, she's on, uh, she's on make it a full screen. That's tough. Where's the gallery? Yeah. There you go. Are you on your no. phone, Maria? I'm on my iPhone. <laughs> yeah, right that's that's phone phone. Phone. More over here. If you're on your iPhone, you might be able to swipe to the right or left and it might give you a different view. Oh, I think, yeah. Oh, that's right. <laughs> now I can see four people. <laughs> yeah, and then yeah. if you keep swiping on the screen, it'll go to the rest of the people. Really? Yeah. Oh, I oh. see what you mean. Okay. Well, you can pick out who you like. James Jr. Dalegas. Well, I guess this is uh, where we're at. Looks like we've got about 22 people, which is just a few short of what, uh, what we expected, but that's okay. Uh, so uh, welcome to everybody. Buenos dias. Bienvenidos. Uh, we're going to have a very interesting program today. Uh, our speaker is known and loved uh, mm -hmm. by most of us here in Boston. And uh, so Maria will, will give her an introduction here in a couple of minutes. But uh, just a couple of couple of mentions. Uh, we are now uh, 1,730 members strong worldwide. Uh, speaking of worldwide, uh, where's Ron Ortiz Dinkle? I don't see him. Anyway, I see him either. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm sure he'll pop in at some point. But uh, uh, just a, a quick mention. Um, save the date. I don't know what we're going to do with it yet, but September 26th is the 10 year anniversary of Voces de Santa Cruz. Nice. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow. Ten, wow. 10 years. So uh, uh, we're, we're gonna, I think we're going to talk about doing something, probably maybe another Zoom, uh, and maybe everybody can have a beverage of choice in front of them while we just kind of celebrate the <laughs> occasion. But uh, uh, before, we were actually going to rent out the La Fonda and have a big old blowout. But, uh, <laughs> that's, 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 I'm joking, of course. Uh, uh, James, do uh, you want to take a, a moment and tell us how the chat room works in case anybody has any questions? So uh, during the presentation, if you have any questions, you can go into the chat room and, and type your question in. And then at the end of the presentation, we can read, read the questions for, for Jim. Uh, yeah, you know, I, I was going to share my screen and just go over a few of the basics. But I think everybody here got zoomed down. Uh, the chat room, if you look down on the bottom, right in the middle, uh, you'll see chat. If you click on that, it'll come up. Um, this is where you guys can uh, go ahead and put your questions in during the presentation. And I think at the end, we'll, we'll kind of go through them one by one. Um, when you do a chat where it says two, you can send it to everyone or you can do a a one-on-one -on -one message if, if needed. Um, like I said, I, I don't 
think I need to go over everything. Everybody seems to know where the mute button is and share the video. And if you want to look at the participants and the gallery view, I think everybody has that done. Unless anybody has a question, um, I think what we'll also need to do is everybody uh, mute during the presentation. Um, yeah. if, if, I, if I see anybody not muted, then uh, don't be surprised if I put the act down and mute you myself. So uh, okay. if there's no questions, I, that's really all I got. Any? All right. Yeah. And after after uh, Jayla's uh, presentation, we'll give everybody a chance to uh, introduce themselves. So, uh, uh, Maria, you want to go ahead and introduce our guest? Hey, Dad, yes. just, real, just real quick, I'm sorry. Uh, this is being recorded, FYI, and uh, the link will be sent out. I'm assuming my dad will send it out uh, at some point. It usually takes maybe 30 minutes after the presentation for me mm -hmm. to get the link, and it will be sent out to everybody. So, all right. I'm muting. Okay. Okay. It is my pleasure to introduce Jema Chevalier. She will be taking us on a pictorial and behind the scene journey of the career of our Dama del Baile Maria Benitez. Jema is a close friend to several of us here today. And two, she is a valued member of Voces who actively supports our mission, not only on Facebook, Book, but also out in our community. Her accomplishments are valuable documents and documentaries of New Mexico's heritage. Dama has focused her writing and filmmaking career on exploring some of her home state's hidden histories. Most recently, she worked on a TV segment about New Mexico for Swiss National Television, and it aired in German in Europe. They should have it in Spanglish for those of us in New Mexico. <laughs> <laughs> Current, currently, Jema is finishing a short film about the New Mexico Governor's Mansion, narrated by author Hampton Sides. Jema? Thank you, Maria. And I just want to say how much I love this organization. And um, Maria, Jim, Stephen, you are just amazing. Your tireless work to collect all this history. Um, sometimes the unofficial history is so much more interesting than the museum stuff. So, yay, I think it's a wonderful, wonderful organization. And it's really fun for me to be here and see people and um, old friends and some people I think I know, but have never met. So this is our first virtual meeting and I'm, I'm thrilled to make your acquaintance and uh, happy to see Sonia here again. I, I hope I don't bore you. She's a trooper. She's, a, she's already seen this presentation. So. If she dozes off, I'll, um, I'll get out the castanets and uh, try, to, try to get her awake. Yeah. So um, is it okay to share the screen now? Should I do that? Let's see. Sure. Let's see if I can do this. Okay, so um, can everybody see the screen? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Oh, yay. Okay, great. My daughter tore out most of her hair teaching me how to change my PowerPoint over to a Zoom platform. So anyway, well, um, Maria's story could be told in a very academic fashion and you could fill an encyclopedia with the accomplishments of her life, very chronological thing, but um, we found so many extraordinary images of her that we decided to kind of divide her biography in half. Um, we wanted to cover the images of her and also um, her personal narrative. Uh, and we, we themed that narrative to stories in New Mexico history, um, which we'll weave in as we go. Um, this is the, um, the first photographer is Ruven Afanador. And he's a truly extraordinary photographer uh, from Colombia. He's currently working on a cattle ranch here in the American West, but he's represented by a gallery in Shanghai, and he's done a lot of work in New York. And uh, this is not a picture of Maria. The uh, purpose of showing it to you is simply that um, 
It's my belief that flamenco is, is truly one of the most uh, visual uh, dance forms. The images are so much more powerful to me. Uh, no offense to polka <laughs> or uh, square dancing, you know, they're all great, but truly uh, flamenco images are just, they just blow you away. So I'm, I'm partial, I, I admit my bias. Um, these are some images uh, taken by Ruben Afanador uh, of Maria. And uh, there's kind of a, you know, point counterpoint here. She uh, showed up for this photo shoot, shoot with black lipstick, black nails, black eyes, uh, very dark and very stunning. And uh, I think, She's kind of showing the two sides of flamenco. There's the angular, harsh, you know, powerful duende. And then there's also the soft, white, you know, romantic, uh, more flowing movements that uh, flamenco can incorporate. These are some other images by uh, Ruven and uh, you can see, uh, you know, there's a classic profile. She's an exquisite, is an exquisite beauty. Um, but the interesting thing that kind of emerges from some of these images is that in many cases, her eyes are shut. And most photographers will tell you they want to capture their subject with the eyes open because the eyes are the window to the soul and, um, you know, you can see a person's inner beauty and that sort of thing. Oh, but I think um, in a lot of flamenco performances, you'll see the eyes are shut. And, and the, so, you know, in many cases, pictures will have the eyes shut. And I think that's because, at least Mar in Maria's case, she knew that flamenco had a very profound story to tell and that would often embodied tragedy or or sad things and you had to access an inner emotional world that you know required you to to think about it and ponder it and so in many cases you'd see her with the eyes shut using her entire body to tell the story and um, these these images really are powerful to me at least they they show they tell, they tell you so much in just a few simple uh, movements. This again is that image of Maria that Ruben took, uh, and they kind of made a mirror image of it for Joyce Theater. And the thing I love about this one, I, I, don't, I don't know, Maria's gonna kill me if I say this, but if you look at her face, it's almost alien. It's, you know, she's, She's really otherworldly and looking to another place, kind of looking beyond. And that I think is one of the powerful things about her dance story is that she was able to take people to really far away places. And Reuven captured that so eloquently. Here's the image from the cover and a, uh, you know, there's so many beautiful photos of Maria in, in uh, gowns and beautiful attire. And, and some people said, well, you know, why, why did you use this really sad picture? Um, and I think, again, it's that Maria wanted dance to be profound. She wanted it to tell profound stories. She didn't want to be known as the pretty girl who could twirl her skirts. So this, this image really captures that mission of hers. Then we go on to um, Ken Howard. Ken's a very famous photographer. Um, he's mostly known in the opera world. He's uh, famous at the Met in New York, Opera St. Louis, the San Francisco Opera, and of course, Santa Fe Opera. And I asked him um, when he came out, it seems like a decade ago, <laughs> the last time the opera was in town or performing, and uh, you know, to give me permission to use some of these photos. And we went through a lot of photos and he said, wow, I, I love these personal sweet images of Maria. I wish I had taken these. And I said, Ken, flip, flip them over. 
you know, on the back it said copyright Ken Howard, 1975, New York City. <laughs> so he'd forgotten, and, you know, it was like 45 years ago. He'd forgot. He probably needed these, you know, to, back in that era, people would want your autograph or they'd send you a letter asking for a publicity photo. And so she had these beautiful shots uh, that Ken took. And uh, here's an image of her dancing, and I think that's Carmen at the mat. Ken also captured her, of course, in her element. It's like lightning in a bottle to me because the, there's a collaboration between the photographer and the subject to capture that one moment that won't be blurry. She can't pose that skirt up in the air. You know, it, it has to be captured. So, and um, really extraordinary images. Ken also took this photo and it's a Manolo de Cordoba, a beautiful a duo, but your eye instantly goes, at least mine does, instantly goes to Maria. She wasn't um, a soloist in many cases. There's often multiple dancers on the stage, but she was such a singular uh, performer that people would come away from her performances thinking it was her show, <laughs> you know? It's like, oh, I went to see Maria, but it was actually Carmen, you know, or La Traviata, or La Vida Breve. Beverly Guile took these photos up in uh, Taos, and uh, we'll talk more a little bit about Maria's uh, heritage, her dual heritage as both Spanish and Native American. Um, but this was early in her career, and you can see um, such beauty and, you know, the classic Spanish attire and the filigree earrings or, you know, the rose. But she also has this great photo of Maria in, in braids. And I think that, you know, just one of those instances where it was early in her career and she's trying to, let me turn my phone down. She's trying to uh, develop her, her stage persona and reconcile the two worlds that she came from. It was about the same time that uh, David Ellis and Meryl Brockway were starting to make films about Maria. She was just really taking the world by storm. I just have a real short reading from the book that kind of is themed to this photo. This is a Seguria from uh, 18th century, uh, old flamenco poem. Cuando yo me muera, te pido un encargo que con las trenzas de tu pelo negro me mare las manos. When I come to die, I ask of you one favor, that with the braids of your black hair, they tie my hands. So you can see, you know, how intense uh, the themes are in flamenco. There's some more pictures by Beverly. Again, just showing, you know, her real classic beauty. These images here are by Winter Prather. His collection is up at uh, History Colorado, and these pictures had really never seen the light of day, but they're truly extraordinary. Um, these were, were taken in 1970 at La Fonda in Taos, not La Fonda in Santa Fe, and uh, really amazing composition. The, um, you know, amazing form and technique, of course, and you see her, her face is half lit, half in shadow, which is very, you know, an editorial statement about the themes of flamenco. You see the two, you know, guitarists are just looking up enraptured at her, <laughs> kind of uh, lit up a bit there and the, the shadow of her back. And if you look carefully, you can see the, the cantuar, his hands are up uh, and he's kind of speaking to her shadow. So it's a beautiful photo. And kind of one of these things, you know, again, the sort of alien uh, presentation that, 
um, she was trying to bring a new art form to the United States, and it was an uphill battle. And of course, you know, Vicente Romero is very famous as well for, for working to bring flamenco to the forefront, but it was always considered very exotic or fringe or, you know, not a mainstream dance form. But we recognize it as our own, as New Mexican. And just this image of uh, this, this uh, landscape here, you instantly know that's, that's Taos, you know? Even if it does, uh, there are no clues to that, we have a way of telling uh, authenticity here that like nowhere else, I think, in the United States. Here's another image of uh, the singers Miguel Galvez, and uh, there's an interesting interplay of the shadows there on the wall. Uh, the dancers have a relationship between each other in the story. Whoops. And the um, the production has an it has a relationship with the audience. But the narrator is not just telling the story. He, there's a kind of a third relationship with him. And he, uh, and we see it today, like with Vicente Griego, they're, they're not just um, talking heads. They're living the experience of the kids. They're, you know, they're putting their emotion into it. And they, you know, it seems like that helps to put forth the dynamic of the struggle between good and evil or, or whatever the themes are at play in a particular production. Oh, and just, um, I should have made a slide for this. I don't know, can you guys see this, this uh, image? of yeah. Maria's? Yeah, this is also a winter prather. And Maria's back is just a giant, exquisite chiseled piece of muscle. She was always very proud of it, always had her gowns made to show off her back. And I think, again, uh, she, she knew that, you know, the flamenco story is a difficult one and life is hard and there's difficult things. And she wanted to put her spine and her back and her muscle into the story. She didn't just want to be a, a pouty lip or a pretty curl or that sort of thing. So it made her, whole presentation much more profound. Okay, these images are by Jack Mitchell. Jack Mitchell's passed away, but he took some beautiful color photos. And of course, flamenco is very, very colorful, extraordinarily colorful. Um, and these are great images. Uh, it's just funny, we tend to remember Maria in black and white, just because she was so adept in her performance life at showing um, the, the sad and tragic aspects of life that, you know, the color photos aren't as, to, and to my mind, they're not as lasting, but they're so beautiful. And in fact, this one here on, uh, in the blue was uh, on the cover of Dance Magazine in 1984. Uh, it's kind of funny because the title was something like uh, Spanish flame, you know, sort of, sort of dissing it, like, oh, she's the exotic little spicy dancer. And uh, I, I think nowadays uh, they probably would find a better title. These pictures are by uh, Brian Fishbein, who spent decades in uh, Santa Fe, photographing different performances. And um, I'm not sure if one realizes how hard Maria worked to bring flamenco into the community. She was constantly finding venues and places for her students. Uh, they'd perform at Fiesta, at nursing homes, at Spanish market. They were in all the schools. Uh, the little boys didn't want to dance. They could learn guitar. Uh, all different, she tried to find and create and make opportunities for, for people to make a living ultimately as dancers. And of course, here's a little Emmy before she became famous. There's another one to, you know, Maria uh, had to really, let me go back. She had to really work um, 
in, in some academic circles, flamenco is not considered a Spanish uh, colonial art form. It's considered an import and it's from Spain and so it's not organic to New Mexico. It's not original to New Mexico. And even though it probably, you know, we, we still find it today in remote Mexican villages. So it probably did come over and steep in the, you know, the P Mexican peninsula and then work its way up the Camino Real. And maybe the colonists didn't write about it, but they were probably dancing around the fire once in a while. So, but sometimes the museums are hesitant to allow Spanish dance on the bandstand because they say, well, it's, you know, it's an import. It's not really a New Mexican art form. But Maria spent her entire career trying to foster the growth of it here. And uh, here's our little precious uh, Geo, if you don't mind, uh, Anna, there's a little daughter there on the, on one side, <laughs> real extraordinary dancer. And this was some years back. This, this is a photo by Morgan Smith, who took many great photos of Geo. And then here the girls are performing. This was actually Emmy's troupe performing at Skylight. You see Vicente up there at the top and, and Emmy. They've been down to Hobbs and taught probably hundreds of kids by now. They, when the schools are in session, they work really hard to bring it into the schools. And New Mexico is finally recognizing that the art form really has uh, a, a big home here in New Mexico. There's the official ornament with a photo by Brian Fishbein. And here we have an extraordinary image. Joanne Garcia Oriana is here with us today. Hi, Joanne. She um, may, I was so blessed to work with her um, so she could create this image for the book. And it's a a truly extraordinary media piece. I won't uh, I'll let you, I'll let her answer questions about it, but you can see the, the little fans are probably made from clay or what have you, and just an extraordinarily ethereal piece. Here's just an image of, of Vicente. It, no, no story about Maria would be complete without Vicente. They both worked so tirelessly to, to bring the art form to fruition here. Here's another image by uh, Morgan Smith. There's uh, Maria in the apartment in New York City. What do you think about flamenco dancing? Um, there's a picture by Reuven Afanador in the background and then uh, Maria is looking at her mother Jerry and a uh, interesting, you know, we claim Maria as our own but she wasn't from Taos. She wasn't even born in New Mexico. Her mother was Algonquin, Oneida, Chippewa, Iroquois, and Ojibwe. Her father was from Puerto Rico. So they, when they moved to Taos, uh, Taos claimed her. You know, it's like she's her adopted daughter. So even today, people think um, that her mom was an enrolled member of Taos uh, Pueblo which was not the case. And I, just to touch back on this one theme, you know, a lot of these children here and now these young professional dancers think of Maria as their flamenco madre and uh, it's sort of an inherent irony to that because she, she had to fight really hard, you know, in the context of the civil rights movement, we're having, um, problems in New Mexico with, you know, recognition of, of, of women, of Hispanics, of Native Americans. So all during these time periods where those battles were being fought, Maria was trying to be recognized as a woman, as a Hispanic, as a Native American, and also as someone bringing an obscure dance form to the forefront. So she, she knew she had to stand her ground as an artist and she couldn't emphasize her domestic mother life. And even though she, she was a wonderful mother, has a wonderful son, people often didn't know that she was a mother. Um, she really tried hard to be known as, as the artist. And um, 
it was a difficult journey because her mom was a teacher and they traveled around, moved to different places where her mother taught, for example, at a Bureau of Indian Affairs school. And they would be teaching maybe Menominee or Sioux or Apache children. And so uh, Maria didn't speak their language and was probably, you know, it was probably a fairly lonely childhood. And then she had to um, move to Taos, take ballet classes, another odd thing, you know, <laughs> with Louise Licklider, and then decide to take Spanish dance. And then she decided at age 18 to go to Spain. So she had to hurry up and learn Spanish and move halfway across the world and become, you know, an impresaria of something that that she wasn't born into. So it's really extraordinary. This is just a little birthday uh, card with some different images. It shows there a picture with her cat as a child. There she is dancing on the plaza of Taos in 1955, dancing ballet. And there's a cute picture of her with a package in, uh, I think that was in Madrid. But um, it all, it all be, you know, it's all based back on New Mexico. I think New Mexico, because we have difficulties here, it teaches you strength. And she had to have strength to persevere and, you know, sojourn out into the world and go to an alien place and, and uh, learn something totally different and yet still represent New Mexico and still epitomize New Mexico. Um, she, she wanted dance to be her language. She wanted to promote her ideas and be heard. She was ultimately seen by 7 million people in 1600 venues in 49 states. Um, tw and 12 countries. She's been on uh, you know, many TV shows, PBS. She's been in operas such as Carmen, La Traviata, El Amor Brujo, uh, La Vida Breve. She's danced uh, Jacob's Pillow. And in 2006, she um, was awarded the highest honor the, gov the King of Spain can confer in the arts world, El Real Orden de Isabel La Católica. And of course, she was a Santa Fe living treasure and received the governor's award for arts. Um, but what she valued the most, and I think what she, she really treasures now, are the relationships with um, people in New Mexico, the cultures here, and her students. And she's thrilled that so many of them are moving into professional categories and I know uh, COVID setting everybody back but some some of them are doing zoom classes and uh, performances at uh, I don't know old drive-ins or recreating drive-ins and that sort of thing so it's the same old story you know you have to fight for your art form and so uh, I think that's the legacy that she'll leave to us and I'm uh, really grateful that that we've been able to uh, to learn from her. So I think I can end it there. I can, I had one more reading from the book, but uh, it's a bit tedious. So if people have questions, I'd love to hear any questions or memories of Maria if people want to share. Hey. Or did I put you all to sleep? <laughs> no, we we'll get the screen to go. Get the screen up. Get the Pardon other screen me? up. I think they want you to stop sharing so everybody can see. Oh, okay, everybody. I'll stop sharing. There we go. There, now. So, Thanks. Jayma. I think we've got questions in the chat room, uh, Jayma. Yeah. Yeah, I... Um, I think there was a couple of questions, but it looks like one was answered. Uh, I don't see any specific questions yet. I think everybody wanted to ask them, so um, nothing in there well, that I've seen. I love hey, the comments. Mm -hmm. Hey, Jema, I have a I have a question, Jema. 
what's Maria doing now? Where, what's, where is Maria and what is she doing? She's, she's here in Santa Fe. She's battling some health issues. So oh. believe me, if there'd been any way to include her, I would have done that. And, but I'll make sure she sees this and it'll be really, you know, touching for her to know, you know, like even beforehand, Kathy was mentioning that she got to see her as a small child and, that that train of memories is so great and i love it arthur remembered the jerry smoked cigars <laughs> yeah she had this little white pickup truck and she's kind of this is maria's mom she used to tear around taos and chomp her cigar and she was a character and you know larger than life and uh that may really made an impression on people. It was a you know teacher for many, many years. I think her last teaching job was at Tosuki Elementary School, maybe, that uh, Maria's mom, Jerry. And um, <laughs> go ahead. I, I don't think I, I know or it's been mentioned, but did she have siblings? Uh, no, she was an only child. And, um, I think, yeah, she was very singular in her approach to life. You know, she she took the best of everything. If you went to her house, she'd have a smudge stick and, you know, maybe some fry bread. And then she'd have a Santo Nino and a rosary, you know. So she, she <laughs> just was a very independent person and she saw what was out there and she figured it out. And somehow she figured it out that she could be successful at something so obscure you know it's still obscure we i consider flamenco world-class art but it's not on dancing with the stars or so you think you can <laughs> dance and they don't teach it in schools outside of new mexico so but she somehow knew that um that it was a powerful language for her to learn and uh she was really adept at it Emma? yes um, many of us here, uh, our, our memories of, of Maria come from her performances at El Nido in, in Tezuque. Uh, is there any information or any statistics about how many times she performed there? Because it seemed like she performed there a lot. Yeah, right. And All summer. Yeah. I went through a lot of binders and, um, other people, many other people had gone to the binders before me, you know, for grant applications. And uh, there was a piece on her on the Humanities uh, Council website and for Wikipedia, and, you know, uh, just, just drawing, uh, extracting an um, overview from that. She was always performing every chance she could. Um, they did Vegas Verdes in Arizona. They did El Gancho, they did El Nido, they were at the Santa Fe Opera, um, they were on tour. Um, El Nido, yeah, was a really important part of her, her professional career. And after the building was remodeled, I was out there with friends and we were shocked that there was not a single image of her in the building. <laughs> so no. the owners were happy, we're gonna eventually, and we planned an event with Emmys dancers we were going to do an event this spring and we were going to donate a framed image of maria for the el nido walls but of course covid canceled all of that but we're hoping to do that maybe maybe next year or the following year because it, she should be memorialized there you know so many people remember her if one oh, um, go ahead sonia sorry if um anyone walks into the local sentinel bank of taos there is this incredibly beautiful um, art piece of Maria and that's been up for many years. And she is um, adored here in Taos, as you, as you mentioned her connection to Taos. It's uh, precious to many of us that remember her uh, for decades, many decades, she would come and perform for the children in the elementary schools. And um, you still hear about that. I remember when um, did you get to see when she, and the vivid memories that people will always have and they speak of. Um, she is loved here in Taos. My mom used to work at the El Prado Post Office and she got to know Jerry as well. And 
She'd walk in with a cigar when you could walk into the post office smoking back in the day. But she would send care packages to Maria when she was in Europe and to her grandson. Um, so um, Maria is uh, well known here. My dad remembers her. I think I mentioned to you this uh, when I spoke with you last time, jogging when back in the time of the 60s or 70s, people really didn't jog out here. My, my um, Shorter, what's the famous shorter athlete? Fritz. What was it, Frank? Frank Shorter? Frank Shorter, right. Yes, it was Frank Shorter and Maria Benitez and be like, why is she running down the street? And people would wonder what, she was, always into her health and her fitness and um she, it's um evident from the time that i got to actually study with her she was very thoughtful about um being a healthy woman and um being an incredible role model to many people in her life the local children at santa fe i'm sure um as here in taos she is loved thank you sonia i'm really grateful to hear that your experiences with her so great. And I see that Julie mentioned in the chat that she remembered Vicente and um, as a child seeing performances there and that her late father Don Campbell were friends. Yeah, everybody, like even that night I was at El Nido, there was some guy at another table, uh, like a plumber, and he's like, oh yeah, I took a class with Maria and you know, the, the chef was like, oh yeah, my wife took a class. And so I think even if you don't, you know, even if you never took a dance class, you probably know somebody who did, you know. We're a small enough town and state that at least somebody in our circle was a, was a skirt twirler, you know. Yeah, I took some classes with, with Maria and also with Vicente. Um, oh, wow. I was in the ballet world, but, but you know, um, Maria was such a strong role model for all of us who were dancers at the time, and our paths crossed all the time. Our, we went to watch her dance. Of course, my parents loved to watch her dance, so the whole family went. And uh, I, I studied with her and with Vicente, and she was always just, I went to see her, if she was performing, <laughs> I went every night. Wow. You know, right? Wow. <laughs> And uh, the price, yeah. yeah, no, I mean, she was just amazing as a performer. You know, she's one of those performers that, like you say, there could be a hundred people on stage and everybody's eyes are on her. She had that charisma that was very special, and she was very inspiring to other performers and other dancers. Very special, and I think you know, um, what we had in Santa Fe growing up was so special, I've never seen it another flamenco dancer live like Maria Benitez and I've gone to New York and I'm here in Montreal now and I I'm disappointed every time I see another dancer because it's not her exactly <laughs> my son's little class at Monte del Sol we watched a bunch of cars one year and raised money to go to uh, Madrid and Barcelona and I paid extra so my son and I could go see flamenco and I told him oh this will be great you know this is the mother country it was terrible. Yeah, she was <laughs> spoiled. We were so spoiled. We're like, this we were spoiled. I know, it's incredible. Well, if you kind of think about the whole venue at El Nido, I yeah. mean, we were just right on the stage. Mm -hmm. I mean, remember back where the tables were all just right around the stage mm -hmm. and how lucky we were. Rebecca and Julie, everyone, we were sitting right there. We were like right next to her watching this magic and i know as a young teenage girl i just wanted to be her yeah. i wanted to be thin like her i wanted to be able to dance like her so she was very inspiring to all of us and we were very lucky in those days to be able to be so close to her yeah good memories of her being in a class with her you'll never forget um Kat, was it Kathy that mentioned you had a class with Maria or Rebecca? It was Rebecca. Yeah. Rebecca. Um, yeah. She would, um, as in times of the past, like ballet teachers or other teachers of dance, would um, she would come up and she'd make sure your posture was such that you had mm -hmm. the form, that you were executing the technique proper. She'd stand right in front of you and she'd tell you, do it. And you just did and she'd correct or she'd nod her head and walk away when it was what she expected or hoped to see or wanted to see. Um, 
strict teacher, even to the last that she was teaching. It was old school teaching, in my opinion, okay. which I appreciate that. And she was close to her students. She was present, her energy. We wanted to do everything proper the way she was teaching it. Um, she did not, she did not allow for um, disrespect, disregard, dismissive, anything. She was, it was, you were there present, body, mind, and soul. Um, one of the best teacher I've ever had, truly. And so her technique was amazing. She, yeah. you know, oh, totally. Technically, as a like master, she course. was the top, you know, really incredible. I remember she used to take like a sprung floor and go out uh, to gymnasiums and little, you know, Pecos or Okeawinge. It was always like, well, we're on the road. You know, it didn't phase her. And, and you see that with the companies today that, that they have to, you know, do everything. Hair and makeup, get the music, get, you know, program books, run the credit card machine, all that stuff. Uh, they're really entrepreneurs, you know. Sonia, did she teach you castanet? Um, no, but I wish I'm, I'm studying now with Emmy and oh. with Gaia Vivancos, um, Gaia Vivancos out of Spain through Zoom, believe it or not. Wow. I wish she had. I wish it was yeah. a different focus. I have her DNA in these. These are from when I was a child. Yeah, they're all chipped because I was not very good. You know, I dropped them a lot. <laughs> But it's, I keep them in my little treasure box, and I told my kids, this goes in my coffin with me. <laughs> it goes in the coffin with me. <laughs> I, do, I do have other dresses, though. Oh, I do. Um, she came one day. My husband would drop me off for class because we'd come from Taos, and he'd pick me up, and sometimes he was late. So we'd get to talking, and... One day in particular, she said, I have something you might be interested in. And because I'm barely five feet and she's, I'm not even sure how tall Muddy is, but at the time she was wearing it, it was the T-length fashionable flamenco style. So it fit her probably um, like a uh, little well, T-length. And for me, it's like all the way down to the ground. Mm -hmm. But um, she was very petite, but very muscular. It's low in the back, as you described. It's a beautiful dress. Wow. And it's in my closet for now. I have wow. to lose weight to get into it, I think. <laughs> no, that, hang well, on to that. Jamie, that was going to be my question. There, that there must be a collection of her gowns, I hope. You're going to tell us. Yeah. Um, I should have. I've been remiss. Nicola Sachava. As is the scholar on flamenco uh, and she wrote a wonderful book called the spirit of flamenco and uh, had an exhibit at the folk art a few years back and as part of the exhibit she acquired two of maria's dresses i think two uh, one was the one from dance magazine and they displayed them at the exhibit along with a few other bits of memorabilia but um I'm hoping National Hispanic Cultural Center might eventually be a repository for a lot of these things, especially the Absolutely. photos. Absolutely. Yeah, that's the ultimate yeah. goal. And if they turn it down, I'm giving it all to Vosis, you know, because they don't want to see them. <laughs> we'll figure it out. Yeah. Did she make her own costumes, or did she, do you know who made her costumes for her? She had a lot of different, um, a lot of different, gowns that she would purchase or opera companies would buy for her and uh, mm -hmm. people would make for her and uh she, she used to collect the montons from spain you know those beautiful floral shawls are just exquisite and it um when she moved this last time um they had an estate sale at her house and i was number one in line and number two was sochi um Jimenez from Stagecoach Foundation. And uh, we kind of had an alliance. And I said, well, I can't fit into any of the gowns, but I can tell you they're in that room. And you know, the minute they opened the doors, we went scurrying to buy things. So I know, I know some of the purchasers of some of the things. And um, she just had such an extraordinary, uh, you know, people loved her so much that they made, you know, Sonia mentioned the piece of art in Sentinel Bank. There's so many images of her, her that aren't even credited, but I mean, she had you know bronze sculptures, oil paintings, 
um, watercolors, and there's some classic uh, Santa Fe, City of Santa Fe posters where they'd have Zazobra. Mm -hmm. And then you could tell it was Maria, but they don't credit her. But I mean, so many artists just adored her as a subject that she crept into a lot of um, a lot of different things. There's a lot of images of her all over the place. Um, yeah. Stephen, do we want to do individual introductions here? Yeah. Well, you know, it's really just so amazing to see all the everybody here and. Mm -hmm. Everybody's got their smiley faces on. We love seeing all you wonderful people. Jamie, thank you so much. You're too cool. You're the coolest thing I know about sometimes. I swear <laughs> oh, you are. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you so very much. You guys. You're so, so gracious and so wonderful. Mm -hmm. And this is one of the things that everybody needs to also know that Jamie also knows a lot of, this, of Mitote about Santa Fe that she's not going to tell you about right here. But someday we're going <laughs> to track into that and we're going to find it out. I'm telling you, I'm going to convince you to, to, to let it out someday. Yes. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, it's good to see everybody. And uh, uh, we got some new people, too, that we, we haven't been here before. We want to welcome you. Please uh, come back. You know, we, we have some plans kind of in the future with some uh, more Zoom stuff happening that's going to happen. Uh, uh, we're still kind of cooking it in the background there. And then, uh, you know, um, we just are... Uh, we're so fortunate to have all of you guys here. Good to see you, Rebecca. How's things in Canada, honey? Everything good? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that kind of stuff. And Sonia, welcome. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. so there's the, the Ecuadorians from back there. La Cuencora, so there, there they are. <laughs> Hi, you guys. Really good to see you. Yeah. And good to see everybody, you know, it's just a great thing. We're so happy that you're here. And kind of stay tuned, everybody. We're going we're gonna to be... Um, we're going to be cooking up some new stuff for you. So do this again. We love seeing everybody's pretty faces. That's all I got. Thank you, Stephen. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> this is great. We'll have I to do a part. The brothers, the brothers and the, si the brother and sister down here at the bottom. Oh, they need Judy to talk to us. Yeah. Absolutely. That's wonderful. Hi, guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, Lorenzo, 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 I think I saw you. Aren't you in Barcelona? Something happened. There we are. <laughs> oh, no, no, there you are. Oh, hey, guys. <laughs> yes. Nice to see you all. Oh. <laughs> yeah. There you are. That's Juan. Gotcha. There Juan, he is. Juan, can you say something to us in Cuencanese? Cuencanese. Hola. Quarantina. Yeah. I would cool. be proud. His mother was my Spanish. Mother. Yeah, oh. very cool. How's everybody handling the quarantine? So far, really? so good. Not so good? Uh, so far, so good. So Order of the day. Start. Just hang in there. <laughs> yeah, I haven't worn shoes in months. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, put your mask on. Yeah, good so. <laughs> quick, good. Quick, uh, quick shout out here, quick mention. Uh, yesterday was a big wedding anniversary for my son James and his wife Angela. So, oh, congratulations! Happy anniversary, James! Happy anniversary! Yeah. Happy anniversary. Twenty-one years. Well, Good for you. Awesome. Can, can, can you somehow post that picture that you that you posted this morning on Facebook? We'd like to see oh. it. Uh, give me a second. Well, let's see how we can. Oh, maybe I can find it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Lorenzo, are you still there? There's some people I can't tell whether they're there or not. A couple of people signed off in the chat room that they had yeah. to leave. Brian Fishbein was supposed to be here, and McCrary was supposed to be here. I don't see them out there. I don't see any photographs. I've seen. Yeah. See them on right now, but it was so cool. 
I want to say, I want to give kudos to Virginia for posting on Facebook her wonderful flamenco dance, which I yeah, enjoyed absolutely, a lot. Absolutely. Right? Right. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Emmy, yeah. Emmy was my teacher and she was yeah. <laughs> Maria's student. Emmy. Was very nice. <laughs> yeah. Well, it really shows, yeah, beautiful form. I'm jealous. So, yeah, I was a failed flamenco dancer. So oh, sure. look at look at Jim. He's got the order. Oh, he's got an ornament. Oh, yeah. That's true. Yeah. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, oh look oh, at that. Oh, oh. Papa. Happy anniversary. Happy Beautiful. anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. I think the Baca family has to keep producing uh, IT people for us forever and ever. <laughs> <laughs> we won't function without the Bacas. I mean, we'll be worthless. Yeah. Yeah. Starting with Jim's mother, who was a nurse at St. Vincent's and helped birth how many thousands of Santa Fe kids? Oh, wow. 12,000. How yeah. many? <laughs> 12,000. 12,000 really. Wow. Could have been like one of us, right? How do I know? Could have been. We couldn't go to the grocery store without somebody stopping us and saying, <laughs> at least talking to my mother, saying, oh, thank you for being wonderful for my delivery. <laughs> so was I. Yeah, wonderful. Yeah. Rebecca, we can't come visit you because we're banned. I know. <laughs> I know. We're, we thought about it, but you know. Well, when this is all over, you're definitely welcome. We have a guest okay. room. So whoever wants to visit when this nonsense is over, you're welcome. It, look, it okay. looks like you and I are able to be grandmas though hands well, on so, with our yeah the, your your kids are your grandkids are living with you now eh? well they're not in our house at the moment but they were for uh -huh. how long? three and a half months wow. three and a half months when they evacuated uh brooklyn <laughs> wow then they were planning on moving here anyhow but it just got you know so they right now they're in their own place oh that's great hey. yeah. Well, my my grandkids are going to go back to daycare in the beginning of September, and then we won't we won't see the whole family for a while because you know it's still there's it's just not safe yeah. for us, you know. So I'm not looking yeah. forward to this winter at all. I understand. So I'm taking as much advantage as I can during the summer. I understand. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, can't everybody wait else we can all be together. Yeah, everybody yeah. else is healthy. Rebecca right? should come to town. We'll do it again soon. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> are we banned in Equ Are we banned in Ecuador? Do you know? <laughs> are you banned? <laughs> you, you can get here, but you have to quarantine. Yeah. Oh, then Without. I can't get out. <laughs> and you can't go back to the states. Hey, I we don't want to go back couple. to the states. It's too bad there. Blanca well, sounds pretty good right now, actually. That sounds like fun. Yeah, it is. <laughs> Nice temperatures, high sixties. Yeah, really cool. Looks Very like good. there's a couple of questions in the chat room that we might have uh, that we might have oh, missed. I was just going to type an answer, but I can answer out loud. Um, Wayman asks, uh, "How do I know Maria?" And um, the answer is, my my parents knew her, and I um, took dance classes with Louise Licklider. Sonia was talking about the, the discipline and Louise used to beat us with a cane uh, to <laughs> behave in class. So she had a, she had a bamboo, uh, it was like a yeah. whip, you know, and she used to hit us and stuff. And, and so I love Maria because she was, seemed so much nicer. You know? <laughs> and um, she taught us castanets and a little bit of Spanish dance, but I feel like I've known her most of my life, you know. So yeah, very cool. Someone had also asked when the next book is coming out. Just FYI, I don't think we got oh. that. Oh, well, that's so sweet. Yeah, I um, I'm doing a little film right now, and uh, 
the short films are just as much work. It's only a 20 minute or less film, but it's so much work that I think I'll need a, I'll need a break after that for a little while. But I, I love to find stories of um, things that haven't been written about, hidden things, you know, that are really obscure. And uh, so if something comes along, I'll, I'll sh I'm sure I'll look into it. Looking forward. Pardon me. Looking forward to it, whatever oh, it is. Yeah, well, Vosis is the best place. You guys have all the good stuff on your Facebook page, all the good cuentos and recuerdos <laughs> and all the good stuff. I'm curious, Jema, about your French Canadian last name. Yeah, my my dad uh, was part French. Unfortunately, I don't speak any French. My daughter's fluent, and uh, when Facebook first came out, she put her Facebook in French, so I couldn't read it. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> yeah. So, it's just so funny. They went they went to Quebec for a visit with the school kids, and the teacher said, "Okay, you guys have to speak French the entire time. It'll be part of your grade." So the kids would go in, you know, to buy a, a little bakery treat or whatever, and they'd speak in French, and the Canadian shopkeepers were like, no, we're not having this. So they would answer in English, like, yeah. you guys do not qualify, you know. <laughs> <laughs> and my, my Spanish is no good either, but I tried. My, my brother was... Um, he went to the Defense Language Institute and uh, he's much older. So he would have been, uh, he wanted to go to Vietnam. He wanted to be a pilot, but he was colorblind. So they sent him to Florida and he got to eavesdrop on Fidel Castro and write down Spanish radio all day long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so he, I'm like, why don't you get the veterans plate? It'll get you out of the speeding tickets or, or give <laughs> me the plate, you know? And he's like, no. That's not cool. I never saw combat, but I love I love language and wish I were better at, at Spanish or French or something, you know. Hey, Jema, I, I, I noticed that you went back and forth from Maria to Maria. So you're, yeah, you're, you're sorry about that. Two, two languages. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Yeah, I inadvertently, Bilingual. I, I slandered her in two languages. Yeah. <laughs> I was pretending you were talking about me the whole time. <laughs> well, you are our, our princessa, our, our La Reina de Vosses. Reina. Yes. Yeah. Well, thanks again, you guys. I'm just thrilled that there's some interest still in flamenco and Maria, and, you know, she'll be really touched, and I'm really, really grateful yeah. to all of Great. you. Yeah, great. yeah, give her our love, eh? Tell her, you know, how yeah. much we admire her. And Oh, yeah, I'm so sure so many of you had a close connection with her, Rebecca. Mm -hmm. I'll definitely remember. And we have a video record of all of us. Yeah. Yes, yes. <laughs> cool. Thank girl. you. Well, thank you all. It's been uh, really great. Good to see everybody. Yeah, glad we got to join you. Yep. Yeah, it was wonderful. Time goes by too fast. We have to do this more often. Oh, yes. We're, we're working, working on, on it. it. We're working on it. <laughs> nice to see you, everyone. Thank you. Love to Jack. Yeah, nice to see you all. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you, Thank you everyone. Bye, Judy. Hey, guys. Bye. Stay safe. Stay safe. Bye. Bye, John. Bye, you know. <laughs> John, <boy. laughs> That's Billy Joe Jim Bob to you. Yeah, right, yeah. Uh, bye. Yeah. What's up? Anything?